Hey, what's up? My name's Dustin, and I'm a developer here at Treehouse. Have you ever found yourself at a restaurant with maybe your friends or family and wanted to split the bill? Well, what if I told you building out an application that can handle that is actually pretty simple? With just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you can build out an application that can take in your bill's total. You could choose between a 5, 10, or 15% tip. If neither of those tips work for you, you can actually set up your own custom tip. And this bottom section here lets you split the bill. So you can either split the bill by yourself, with a friend, a couple of friends, or maybe your whole family. Let's take a look at the code. Depending on where you're watching this, check out the teacher's notes or description for a link to our GitHub. Once you're there, you should see a page pretty similar to this. The README will give you instructions on how to download this project to your machine. But if you're following along, you can just follow what I do. You want to hit this button at the top right called Code. In the drop down, you want to hit this button here. It's going to copy the link to the project. Next, open up your terminal and navigate to the section of your computer where you'd like to store the project. Personally, I'm going to throw this on my desktop. So, cd desktop. Next, you want to git clone, and then paste in that link. By default, this project is going to be called javascript-tip-calculator. If you like that name and you're cool with that, you can press enter. If not, you can type in something else, like project. I like the name, so I'm going to keep it as is, and I'm going to hit enter. Once you've cloned the project, you can either drag the project file to your text editor or if you're using Visual Studio Code, you could just hop into the project like CD JavaScript tip calculator. And then you can type in code space period. Awesome. Let's dive into the code. So I want to mention that this project uses a gulp file to watch for changes to any of the files inside of the front end folder. So with that being said, you're going to need to download and install npm and node. Now, I'm not going to get into how the sculpt file is built or anything dealing with node or npm. So if none of that makes sense to you yet, don't worry. Once it's installed, you'll need to go back to your terminal and make sure you're in the project directory and type in npm start. And this is going to download all your project's dependencies and open it up in your web browser. It should open up on port 3000. Great. Let's take a look at the UI a little bit. We'll notice that there's these main sections for bill amount, tip amount, and how many people are paying. And then you have your output at the bottom. Let's take a look at the JavaScript and see how that looks. So all the files are going to be in the front end folder and then in the source folder. In here, you'll have your images, scripts, and styles. For this video, we're just going to briefly go over the scripts. So drop down this, and you'll have the app.js file. Click that. The first thing you'll notice in here is an object for calculator data. It's going to have a few default values in here, and this is what sets up the project when the page initially loads. Down here for default tipping options, you'll see 5, 10, and 15. And this mimics the default tipping options we have in the UI. Let's go ahead and add a couple more. Let's do a 25 and a 50. Let's hit save and check the browser. And you'll see it here. If we go in here and add a $150 bill and we'll do a 50% tip, you'll notice that these also still work. Now this is done because we coded this part through the JavaScript instead of hard coding it through the HTML. Let's take these back out. Save. And you'll also notice this default split total, and it's set to six. This is how many options we can split the bill. So if you would like to set that to something like maybe 12, let's do that and check the browser. Cool, now we have 12 options. Pretty neat. Another thing you might have noticed is this random theme on load, and it's set to false. 
Let's set that to true and see what happens. All right, let's take a look at the browser and you'll notice a whole nother color theme. If we reload, you'll see another color. Let's take a look at why this is happening. On line 22, you'll see this if statement that basically checks calculator data dot random theme on load. So when this is set to true, this code block will run. And what this is, is we set up an array of colors. We get a random value from that array. And then we set this custom CSS variable called main theme that I set in the styles to one of those colors randomly when the page loads. Pretty simple. Let's go ahead and set this back to six. And we'll turn the automatic themes to false. Great. Now let's take a look at the UI a little bit. Remember earlier I mentioned the three main sections? The build total, the tip options, and then the split options. So naturally I set up an object for each to keep things organized. You'll notice that each one of these has a UI object inside with a build method. And basically what this does is it builds the page on load with data from the calculator data object. Now setting it up with another object and the method inside of that might be a little overkill for such a small project, but it's pretty good to keep things organized as you work. And like I said, each of these will have the same things. Now let's scroll up and take a look at this to calculate object. In here, you'll find the bill's initial value, which is set to zero when the page loads, the initial tip, which is 5%, the initial split, which is set to one when the page loads, and the custom tip and custom tip value, which by default, there is no custom tip set, so it's set to false with a value of zero. At different times throughout the application, these totals will get updated and calculated. So let's take a look at how that gets handled. On line 99, you'll find a function for calculate bill. And you'll see these variables in here. This variable bill is scoped to this function, but we are updating the to calculate dot bill as well as the to calculate dot split. Basically this function here will check for if we're using a custom tip or we're using a percentage tip, and then it will calculate the total bill based off of the bill, the tip, and the split, and we'll get a final output. Now let's take a look at how we set up the UI when the page loads, as well as listen for events, such as typing in a price or clicking a tip or a split option. So if we come to line 132 and we look at this object for the application, you'll see a build method inside. And in there, you'll see those build methods inside the UI object for each of these sections that we went over earlier. Basically, this is building the UI. So at some point, we'll need to call application.build. And then we have this events object. And in here, we have a bunch of methods. So inside of the bill total method, we're listening for all the events for updating the bill total. And the same goes for tip options, the custom tip, confirming your custom tip, and the split options. And then you'll see this listen method down here. Basically what this listen method does is it calls each one of these so that we don't have to call them later on. So application.events, dot bill total, tip options, custom tip, split options, and confirm custom tip. So all we need to do to listen for all of these is just call the listen method once. So at the very bottom of the application, you'll see application.build, where we build the UI, and then application.events.listen, where we listen for all the events for the application. While this isn't meant to be a step-by-step -step guide on how to build this project, I think I gave you a good enough overview for you to tackle it yourself. I strongly encourage you to read our blog post about this at teamtreehouse.com blog and give this project a go. 
You can reach out to us in Slack if you need any help, or if you absolutely crush the project and you want to share your results with us, feel free to post it in one of the Slack channels. Also, make sure to check out the teacher's notes or description for links to resources on our website for you to learn this if you're uncomfortable with some of the topics that we discussed. Until next time, have fun and happy coding.